No film Jean Harlow ever made was more in contrast with her real self. For beneath her film image as a brazen, gutsy woman, an old-fashioned housewife was struggling to get out. The truth was, Harlow lived at home with her mother. For her, show business was a pastime, not a passion. Her mother ruled her life, and Harlow was every inch the obedient daughter. She longed to quit the movies and settle down with Mr. Wright. To Harlow, it looked like Mr. Wright was Paul Byrne. For months, Byrne had escorted Harlow to parties and premieres like the one captured in this rare newsreel film. But no one suspected they might be linked romantically. After all, she was one of Hollywood's most desirable women, and the balding, pot-bellied, middle-aged Byrne was no Clark Gable. But Harlow adored him. For unlike Howard Hughes, who had exploited her, Byrne believed in Harlow's talent. He was dedicated to her career. Despite his moodiness and bouts of depression, Byrne behaved like a gentleman. If you'll be my hero, I'll be your little girl. When we're together, I'm safe from all the world. On July 2nd, 1932, a week after Redheaded Woman opened, Harlow and Byrne were married. The ceremony was an intimate gathering that featured the ruling royalty of Hollywood, including MGM's boy wonder Irving Thalberg and producer David O. Selznick. Two months later, as Harlow was midway through her much-awaited pairing with Clark Gable in Red Dust, the dark psychological problems that haunted Paul Byrne took a drastic turn. On the evening of September 4, 1932, he argued with Harlow about her domineering mother, Harlow stormed off to spend the night at Mother Jean's. She never saw her husband alive again. On Labor Day morning, September 5th, 1932, Paul Byrne stood naked in his dressing room, put a 38 revolver to his head, and pulled the trigger. Suddenly, Jean Harlow was plunged into one of the most bizarre scandals in Hollywood history, a scandal that still provokes controversy today. Pieced together, the events of the tragedy are as melodramatic as any MGM movie. The morning Paul Byrne's body was found, long before the police were called, the most powerful men in Hollywood, Louis B. Mayer, Irving Thalberg, and David O. Selznick, rushed over to his house for damage control. They didn't come to protect Harlow. Instead, they came to shield the studios and themselves. The studio moguls were used to constructing movie plots. That morning, on the patio of Byrne's Beverly Hills home, they held an emergency story conference about how to best explain Paul Byrne's real-life corpse. Searching among Byrne's papers, they chanced upon the draft of a letter, then left it out for the police to discover and to assume that it must have been his suicide note. Dearest dear, it read, unfortunately this is the only way to make good the frightful wrong I have done you and to wipe out my abject humiliation. I love you, Paul. There was a postscript. You understand last night was only a comedy. At Louis B. Mayer's behest, a prominent Hollywood physician announced that Paul Byrne had been impotent. Mayer wanted Harlow to confirm this and claim that it had ruined their marriage, but she refused. For once this woman who had been manipulated all her life stood her ground. She insisted she had been happily married to Byrne and that she loved him. The irony of it all was that Harlow's marriage to Byrne had never been consummated, but she was too loyal and too noble to say so. And the truth about Byrne's sordid death? Harlow's husband, it turned out, had a secret in his past, a common-law wife named Dorothy Millett. Byrne had been involved intensely with Millett a decade earlier and still supported her financially. Millett was mentally unstable and still obsessively attached to Byrne. The night of his death, Dorothy Millett had shown up at Byrne's house. Harlow arrived shortly thereafter. No one will ever know what happened between them but it was enough to push Paul Byrne over the edge to suicide. A few days after his death, Dorothy Millett also killed herself, jumping from a boat into the Sacramento River. With both Byrne and Dorothy Millett dead, Jean Harlow was seen as the helpless victim in a lurid love triangle. She suddenly seemed more vulnerable in real life than her fans had ever seen her in the movies. <laughs>